finish this sentence. In the past decade, Australian football has gone nowhere. Can you elaborate? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I think the be- I can best sum it up when when you when you're a coach of a team, you hope that you know as the years go by and you're coaching the team, you add to that team and things get better and better and better. Now, I, I don't feel that's happening in Australian football at the moment. Things have gone up and down, but on the whole, we aren't getting more players into Europe. Um, you know, we're, we're not developing better players. I don't think um, the quality of the A-League is, you know, improving. National team, I don't think it's improving. I'm not saying that it's not at an okay level, <clears throat> but um, as I said um, personally, I like to see things going forward, things developing in a good systematic sort of way, and I, can't, I haven't seen that happening. That's fair enough. With uh, I'll, I'll throw this one to you, uh, Maury. Finish the sentence as well. Have uh, Australian football, where is it at? Well, it, it's at a crossroads, John, in, in, in my opinion. Um, you know, the, the product that we, we have currently seen um, over the last few years has not been a, an exciting product. Um, therefore, you know, there's, there's a lot of uncertainty about the future of the game with, with broadcast in particular. Um, but I think that there's, a, there's also a lot of underlying issues in terms of competition structure um, within Australia. Uh, I believe that the, the seasons that currently cross over um, makes absolutely no sense whatsoever uh, to me in terms of the progression of players and the flow from second tier semi-professional NPL football to, to the professional ranks. So... I think that the whole of football in this country uh, must be played at the same time. And this is probably as good a time as any to get all the stakeholders together to discuss what that actually looks like. Yeah, well, we'll touch on that a little bit later. But um, you know, first of all, I, we'll get to the, the registration fee, Swartzy. I, I know this, uh, it means a lot to you because in Australia, it seems to be very expensive. And, um, you know, with that being so expensive, are we missing out on the most talented players that can't afford it? What, what's your thoughts behind the, the registration fees at the moment? Well, the problem I have, I mean, there's, I mean, first and foremost, the fact that it costs so much is, I think, ridiculous. Um, think about it. It's becoming an elitist sport. We don't want it to be an elitist sport. When, we, when I say elitist sport, I mean... I've got this, 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 this thing from the curricula, a circular from Football New South Wales, and I'm not trying to have a dig at Football New South Wales. This is generally a general summary of, of where we are and what costs are involved. Actually, a good friend of mine, Stuart Hodge, is the CEO of Football New South Wales, tried to speak to him before he came on, but didn't get a chance to. But you, you talk about the costs that are involved, and I know the FFA often caught the brunt of, of the discussion about the costs of registrations. But let me just give you a bit of a summary in terms of if you're an under 13 to under 14 playing in the New South Wales Premier League uh, in the youth system between under 13 and 16, you can pay, the clubs can charge you up to $2,650 per annum to play at that club, of which the FFA only received, and I say only, $14 of that fee. And the vast majority of that money goes back into grassroots football. So... Let's get that straight first and foremost. FFA do get a bad rap from it. I'm not trying to defend them. I just, the facts are there. The uh, Football New South Wales received $48. So where, where is the rest? That, that's my question. Where does it go? So it, if well, we can see where it goes back into grassroots football, I've got no issue if it, we have to pay for groundsmen, we have to pay for uh, equipment, we have to pay for the infrastructure of a club. But the issue that I have is when it goes to senior NPL players and they're earning between, uh, I don't know, 500 to 2000 a game. Now, I don't exactly. think that money from the juniors should actually be going to the NPL players. I think that they oh we've got Dukes back on. Yes, he's back. <laughs> Dukes, can he's you hear? He's connecting us? still. No, um, not yeah, yet. you're right. You're right. The, the the issue is first and foremost, no one really knows 100 percent where the money goes, yeah. and it's it's up to clubs then to defend themselves to 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 show um, where that money goes. Can I jump um, in here, Swartzy? The, yeah. The concern is sorry. Can I jump in here because I'm on of the course. board of I'm on the board of my local club, and for the MPL program, I do the breakdown. And I've got to tell you, the club charges uh, seventeen fifty, 
and we could charge two and a half grand and we still wouldn't get any change and none of that money would go to the seniors. It would just be for referees. It would be for um, the gear for the MPL, the registration fees. It would be for hiring of fields. It would be for watering of fields. It would be for curating of fields. It would be for improvement of facilities and you still wouldn't get any change. Now, we're, we're specific down at, North, at the North Chelong Warriors. We've got our own facility, so a lot of the things we need to do we, you don't get much change out of that. So what, where the problem is, the problem is that there's not enough funding coming into the clubs so the clubs can offset that and not charge. That's the so issue. The bigger picture is the funding, like you said. So it's a, there's a bigger picture involved here. And I think this will come up in, in the conversation. We're, we're going to touch on it later on. So I don't really want to talk about it now. But it starts at the top and it has to do with all the state federations. And we'll get onto that. But that, that is a genuine issue. So we know that some clubs do use some of that money to, to help fund, or we think, we assume, and so we, we know, we assume that they also use it to help fund their, their senior teams, because for a lot of teams, the most important thing is their senior teams and not necessarily their youth. So that's another issue. And I'll, 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 often that is, that is driven by the cost, by, by money, by success, by fame, whatever it is. The other thing is, you, you, you have a list. I mean, you, you can probably confirm this, Scott. You probably have a, a list of people on a waiting list to try and get in the club. And people are waiting to pay extra money. I, I know of it in, in New South Wales. There are teams where they're charging two and a half thousand dollars per child, and there is a list as long as your arm for people waiting on the list to get in there. So if you say, "Well, I can't afford that," or "I don't want to pay that," they say, "Okay, fine." The next one's in. So you're then, like I said, you're becoming a bit of an elitist sport, and that's what we don't want. We don't want to become an elitist sport. Well, that's my issue that we've got a little bit is that are we missing out on some of the people that can't afford it? And normally the ones that can't afford it, that are from uh, tougher neighbourhoods, say, that, uh, that they can be the most talented. And, uh, and I don't think we have uh, really uh, touched on that enough, especially with the Indigenous, uh, and we can say in different places in, in Australia, uh, and, and you know around the world, like in South America, some of the best players that they come from, the, the, the worst neighbourhoods, like the favelas in Brazil and, and whatever else. But before we get into that too much, I want to say welcome to Dukes. Uh, Dukes, you just cut out when we went live hey, there. Guys, <laughs> I don't know what happened there. It just, <laughs> just cut out. <laughs> it, it, it must be the Croatian internet, but uh, it's good. Uh, I, I hope you're well. How are right. things in Croatia? Great to see you guys. Things here are, I mean, as well as they can be like everywhere else. We're all in uh, quarantine. So it reminds me a little bit, bit about the time when we used to be uh, uh, stuck in hotel rooms <laughs> and stuff like that. <laughs> hey, but, that's uh, true. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's uh, everything's good. Yeah, yeah good. Uh, good. Well, just staying with you, Dukes. You got young uh, boys. They're playing over in Croatia in, in the the youth setups and the academies there. What's the registration fees over there? Oh, it's nothing. It's really, really cheap. It's like three three hundred corner uh, a month. Uh, so I don't know how much that is. Maybe eighty bucks or something like that. Is it? What? How yeah. much is the? Yeah, I know, you know that. About much seventy, is it? yeah, seventy to eighty bucks. Yeah, seventy yeah. bucks a month. A month. Yeah, yeah. still yeah, that's that's, yeah. that's a grand a year still if you play yeah. round. So yeah, yeah. And what about Italy? Yeah, Any... but... sorry, Dukes, you go on. I wanted to say uh, for, Finish for that Dukes. for that type of thing, though, they really have a lot of games. They organise the kids so well. They're all, they're always organising tournaments. Like we go twice, three times a year to tournaments, either somewhere outside Croatia, Italy, uh, Sarajevo, there's a big tournament where all the, all the big clubs, I was talking to Josip about the other day, all the big clubs for the regions, they come and they play against in this tournament in Sarajevo, for example. So there's a lot of that and a lot of friendly games are organised for this. It's not just rolling up to training. They really put a lot of effort into the, the young kids. So the, the fees then, uh, they go towards the, the travel as well? No, no, travel is separate, but it's not a, they're not huge, they're not huge uh, fees for, for the traveling as well. Most people can afford it. I mean, everybody can afford it, you know. Yeah. Just let me just jump in there, uh, Johnny. Just from the viewers, we've had a few comments already saying that people really appreciate Skokes' honesty about the game going nowhere. There's a lot of comments coming about the, the, the structure at all levels, grassroots, local, domestic, national teams. The problem is at every stage. Um, 
And people are saying, there's another comment saying, I'm sick and tired of junior feeds being used for senior players. Um, and it'd be interesting to hear what, what Vinny has to say, because Vinny, you know, you, you're in player agent, sort of in that sort of role. Obviously, you've mm. grown up in Melbourne as well, but now based in Italy. How do you see it being an issue in Australia? What, what, what do you think is one of the, one of the main problems? Look, with regards to the junior registrations in Australia, I'm, I've not lived there for so long, Schwartz, so I don't know all of the ins and outs and how the money is 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 being used and spent. It's normally via or a second or third person, and I would prefer to talk about what I know firsthand. Um, the junior registrations, for example, in Italy are uh, uh, a totally different level. My son, who's eight, plays at a local team which is affiliated to Empoli which is still very close to where I live and we pay 120 euros a year um, and they give him the track suit, the bag and he, they, they play a lot of tournaments as well so um, and they're able to, to sustain this cost uh, even though they get a little bit of finance from the federation um, and yeah and it's it's for a an important football nation, uh, uh, sustainable. So um, with regards to uh, the, the, the Australian uh, junior setup, I, I don't have the information firsthand. So I would prefer not to talk about something that I don't know uh, the details to. Look, I think what the Ossip said is, is a great point because, look, the, the cost of living in Australia is much higher to a lot of places around the world. So, you know, as long as the clubs and federations are transparent of where the money is going, I think people then will understand, you know, because a lot of people think it's going to first team players. A lot of people think it's going to teams trying to win the NPL or get promoted from NPL too. So that, that, that's a big issue. And I still think there should be scholarships for younger players that are talented that haven't got the money. Now, I don't know if Yossip, if they do that, that North Geelong at all, that some families that can't afford it, but want to be in a good environment, a good setup, if you've got that in your place at all. Yeah, absolutely. Um, just this year, we've we've had a couple couple boys who are who go to a, a local public school. They can't afford it. Now we've uh, we speak to the school, and the school come up with with a, a certain amount of money to fund them, which is maybe the equivalent of fifty percent or something like that. Just to it's like a scholarship for them. So we don't don't charge them the full fee. I mean, I think locally because I'm involved and Johnny Didlitzer is involved and uh, and Joey Didlitzer, we understand how, how it works and we don't want any kid to miss out but that's mpl level you know that's mpl level already that's already a more serious level i think the issue is also down lower you know when you get down to low you're saying before how kids get turned away well they don't get turned away when they're eight or nine i mean the fees are two hundred dollars three hundred dollars yeah, i was going to mention so, that you're right so it's not that expensive at the start can that be cheaper as well can that be better to organize absolutely i mean at my club we have to turn people away because we don't have enough facilities to have you know 300 kids so i think they're the big issues rather than the cost down lower yes mpl level it is a, a high fee and absolutely it's a problem if these fees are being used to subsidize uh the senior team i think that's you know that that is a major problem um i i don't think that all clubs are doing that but certainly there would be part of that i mean i don't know but um, yeah, so that's that's sort of I think more an issue down in the in the lower part of the game. It's it's not a huge cost, but um, I mean, Auskick in Australia, the footy they they do it for free, and that's how they introduce their their kids coming through. So, I mean, why can't we have the funding to do that? Yeah, that's the you know what, and it, it upsets me when I hear another code like Auskick they're able to do it for free because um, you know we've got so many people that want to play our game and and we're still trying to make it the number one sport in Australia. Yes, we've got a, a you know the the biggest participation, but we're still not producing players. Enjoying our YouTube channel? Be sure to subscribe and download the Optus Sport app.